beheading beetle, maul, mallet, etc. There are many names. The etymology of the word beetle comes from Old English, essentially meaning mallet. There is a definition in the first of three volumes of Knight's American Mechanical Dictionary, written by Edward Henry Knight, copyrighted by J.B. Ford and Company in 1872, also being copyrighted by Hurd and Houghton in 1876. A heavy mallet or wooden hammer used in driving wedges. The original definition is much longer. I'll put that up on the screen. Pause the video now if you feel like reading. I will also leave a link in the description to the three volumes of the dictionary in case you wish to peruse its pages, thanks to the University of Wisconsin. When I started researching the history, I really couldn't find much. If you know anything or have any more information, please comment down below. With a little time and patience, I did find a book by a gentleman named S. Edwards Todd called The Young Farmer's Manual, circa 1860. It is a detailed account of the manipulation of the farm in a plain and intelligible manner, embracing also the young farmer's workshop. I wouldn't say it is a riveting read, but it is a fantastic resource. I will be leaving a link in the description to this book as well, courtesy of the California University Library. It is totally free. If you feel like reading it, go check it out. If nothing else, I encourage the pursuit of knowledge. On page 257 through page 261, details an overview of making and using a hitting beetle from the type of wood, proper dimensions, and the proper handling of the tool. Starting with the material, beetles should be made of very firm, tough wood, such as the butt end of a small locust, ironwood, or applewood tree, the average dimension being 8 or 9 inches in length having a 2 inch wide shoulder at the ends, being 5 inches in diameter. Rings made of the best iron, 1 inch wide and 3 eighths an inch thick. The handle being no less than 1 and a half inches in diameter and overall 30 inches in length. These measurements can vary depending on the wielder. This is the ideal beetle. As most people, I do not have the funds for iron rings or the setup for attaching. Here is how I will be making my beetle. The beetle and handle will be roughed out with an axe. The final shaping will be done with a draw knife and spoke I do not currently have a lathe. I plan on a spring pull lathe build in the future, but we do what we can with what we have on this channel. Starting with the beetle, look for a piece as close to the final dimensions as possible, but no less. I want a wood that holds up to repeated blows. There are two main types of hardwoods, one being diffuse porous, meaning having vessels more or less evenly distributed throughout the stock and not varying greatly in size, and the other being ring porous, having vessels more numerous and usually larger in cross section in the spring wood with a resulting more or less distinct line between the early wood and late wood. Ring porous woods are easier to split along the annual rings and will not be sufficient for the beetle. However, ring porous woods are suitable for the handle as the wider vessels act as a shock absorber. I am using maple for the beetle and oak for the handle as this is what is native to my area. I am fortunate enough to live on 8 acres in the mountains, which has its perks. Plenty of trees fall naturally every year, in turn I have many piles to choose from, so I am not disturbing the forest more than I have to. If the beetle is made from a round stick that is unseasoned wood, it should be sawed off in late autumn. A one and a half inch hole should be bored through the center lengthwise and left to season slowly through the winter in a sheltered area. The object of the hole is to allow the timber to settle together without cracking or checking. If the timber is split and has the pith removed, the hole is not necessary. If you already have seasoned timber, disregard these instructions. When the timber is well seasoned, shape the handle and beetle to your final dimensions. If you have a lathe, feel free to turn the timbers. If not, an axe and draw knife will work just fine. If you don't have either of these, you can get away with a seasoned log that is close or at the final dimensions and a good knife. You want to start with your stock being 6 inches in diameter. Divide this in half and set a compass to 3 inches. 
Now scribe a six inch circle by using the pith as your center point. So you can make sure there is an even amount of material all the way around. This will help the stock dry evenly through time if your stock isn't at equilibrium. Once you have scribed circles on both sides, use a small axe to rough out your stock. Keep checking your guidelines periodically. Start with each end, then remove the high spot in the middle. At this time, take your beetle over to the shaving horse. If you don't have one, you can make do with a vise. You want to use a draw knife to round your stock further and remove the rest of the bark. After the draw knife, use a spoke shape to refine your shape and smooth the surface further. I don't have a lot of material to remove. I mostly have to take away some high spots on each end of the stock and a bit in the middle. The handle should be a bit thicker than the tenon so the beetle will not slide. The final shape and size of the beetle, however, is up to your discretion. When you feel that the work is up to your standards, you're done. If you are going to taper at the ends of the beetle, do so after you have the whole board. If you do it before, my method of layout won't work as easily. Start by measuring the full length of the stock from one face of the beetle to the other face. You'll want to divide it in half, put a knife mark or a pencil mark at this measurement. If you have an 8 inch beetle, the center of its length should be 4 inches. If it measures 9 inches, your center should be 4.5 inches. You'll want to measure from the opposite face from the one you started with to make sure it is the same distance. Make a mark at the original center measurement from both faces, measure the difference, and once again divide it in half. You should be dead center. Check from both faces again to make sure it is correct. Now that you have found the center of the length, we need to find the center of the width. Let's skip the math. All you'll need is some sort of metal square and a pencil. I'm using a tri-square. Rub the pencil lead generously across the inside of the blade till there is a buildup. Now place the blade over top of your center mark you made earlier. With the stock firmly against the body of the beetle, push it back and forth along its length. Make sure not to rotate the square, it should move in a straight line. Graphite will mark the highest point of the cylinder, giving you dead center. Now you should have an X on your stock. That is where you will be boring your one and a half inch hole. I'm using a timber framing auger to do this. You can use whatever you have available at the time. Remember the hole shouldn't be less than one and a half inches. You'll need a couple of squares for this. One to the front of your drill bit and one to one of the sides. Slowly start boring the hole. You want to check both directions several times when starting the hole. You're looking to see if the bit is parallel to both squares. After the first inch or so, you're pretty much committed. The bit will follow the path of least resistance you have created, and if you are not square, there isn't much you can do at this point. Since the handle is a bit bigger than the tenon, take care to bevel it down to one and a half inches with a gradual slope from about two inches, leaving a crisp shoulder will create a weak point. Find a piece of scrap, drill a one and a half inch hole in it. This will be your test fit jig. Put the jig on the tenon. It won't fit perfect at first. When you take the jig off, you'll see little shiny spots. This is where the grain compresses. These are your high spots. You'll want to take small shavings till the compressed fibers are gone. Then try the jig again, and through the process of trial and error, we will get a good fit. Remember, sneak up on the fit. If it is too tight, you can split the beetle, or it will get stuck part of the way, and you won't get it out. If it's too loose, then there isn't much you can do, and you will need to start the handle again. Remember, you can always remove material, but you can't add it back once it's gone. We still need to cut a wedge and a slot in the handle to receive the wedge. You can find the exact center if you wish. I usually eyeball it. The only thing that is crucial before you start the slot is to orient the growth rings parallel to the long grain of the beetle. If the growth rings are running across the grain, the handle will snap. For the wedge, you want to use a wood as dense or denser than your handle. The wedge should be about 3 8 an inch thick at the top, tapering to nothing. Once you have your slot and wedge, time to drive the handle into the beetle. Remember to pay attention to the direction of the growth rings. The handle should go past the top of the beetle. 
you can always trim the excess later. When you hear a thud sound, the handle is as far as it is going to go. Smear a bit of glue on the wedge. Now set the tip of the wedge in the slot and drive it home. Cut the excess wedge off. The last thing to do is taper your beetle if you would like. You don't have to, the tool is for use. It will take a beating so it doesn't have to look pretty. As long as it does its job well, you're fine. My beetle isn't pretty by any means. Last thing is to test the beetle. And in homage to the comedian Leo Anthony Gallagher Jr., I'm gonna smash some fruit to test my beetle. Like, comment, subscribe, and until next we meet.